Last time on Love at First Shot, we joined the women of Thompson Center and Cabela's as they set out to hunt turkey. What they found was so much more than they could have expected. On this episode, we'll chat with some women who can shine a little light on the attraction so many women now find to hunting. I'm Natalie Foster, and this is Love at First Shot, sponsored by Smith & Wesson. Now, anytime I'm new to a subject, I like to seek out experts in the field and learn as much as I can. Doing just that with hunting led me to Marietta, Oklahoma. I have the distinct honor today of sitting here with Diana Award winner Susie Brewster. And Susie, I can't thank you enough for having us today. Thank you. This is really, really fun and so amazing to see this environment that you have uh, created here. It's really impressive. You have done a lot of hunting. I've done a lot of hunting. Tell me how I get from where I am now, complete novice, not having a lot of luck, to where you are. Well, I've been doing this for a lot of years, a lot of years. And you, you go on a lot of hunts. We don't call ourselves killers, we call ourselves hunters because it's pursuit of a quality animal. But the beauty is in the eye beholder, if you can take a first time hunter and they get a jake, excitement, be very excited for someone who's, who's been successful in their first hunt. If you don't know, ask someone, but ask a woman. You know, it's like if you want a job done, ask a busy person. Yeah. Well, if you want to know about hunting and you're a woman, ask a woman. Yeah. She'll share, and you know, a man may go hunting and, and he may tell about the big one he got or whatever, but he's not gonna invite everybody to go. Uh, and that's not always true. I said, you know, people take their grandchildren, they'll take their son, but sometimes they forget about that daughter yeah. who might have a real passion for doing the same thing. So ask them. So I always start with women, I think. Okay, if you get a woman, uh, she's gonna influence her children, she's gonna influence her neighbors and her friends, and she's gonna understand the conservation aspects of hunting and be able to defend it. I had visions of my trophy and, of course, of the meat and all of that right, that I was right. so looking forward to, but, of course, it didn't pan out. You came home empty-handed. I did. The thoughts were still in your mind, and the first thing you were thinking about, when can I go, where can I go next? Right. Because I can, I can do this. That's what women are. We're a can-do people. If you've never missed, you've never hunted. Right. And I feel really sorry for people who say, oh, I have never missed. You'll hear Bubba say that. But it's really not, probably not true. He's probably just in the bragging rights. One of the things you really get to know is like the anatomy of an animal. Always ask, you know, exactly where should I put my shot? Everybody's been there. Everybody took a first step. Which way do you think it might have come? My husband and I hunt together. You can pull them away from that office. You can pull them away from all the things that are, you, you're thinking about and all the things that are really on your mind. And you kind of concentrate on that togetherness. And, and you just, it's a closeness. Nature does that for you. I mean, I think that's kind of way back from the beginning of time. You know, nature's what brought you together. The enjoyment that I have is being with him. Those memories made with those oh. people, they last a lifetime, first they of do all. Last a and they there's just no value that you can place on them, right? No, not at all. Not at all. And it's such a feeling of accomplishment. I mean, and it's just a it's such a shared time. Well, I just love how not only do they represent stories and memories for right. you, but they right. also represent you serving someone else. Oh, definitely. Definitely in Africa. I mean, these people are protein starved. There isn't that much food, and the food that they do eat, the mealy meal and whatever, doesn't have a lot of food value. Yeah. So when a hunter comes into a community and they can harvest an animal, the people in that community want the meat badly, so you share. You always give meat back to the community and the people around you. You know, all the money that we pay we have money that's designated from our, our trophy fees, from our ammunition, everything you buy to create with the hunting world goes back in some way to give back. A lot of the funds too, I understand, go into anti-poaching efforts. Definitely. Oh, in Africa, definitely. They so go you're into... really, you're keeping the herd intact, actually. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yes, you are. And, you're, and, and the kill is very specific. And you're giving value to an animal. Right, exactly. The to, life by of cutting it. the poaching. Because it, the rhino poaching, when you're just shooting an animal and leaving it lying, uh, but just taking the horn, it, it makes no sense at all, and leaving the young behind. And I find that most hunters I've spoken to are very passionate about that. It, it is not, you need to Definitely. use that animal, every aspect of that You're animal. Right. I never saw myself as a hunter, but now I find it such a worthy pastime. It is. And there's so much that you can do to give back. Well, you can, hunting. and you're enjoying nature, and you're with other people, and you're just sharing a passion. And you might surprise uh, yourself. You might surprise yourself. In fact, I, I find every time I go out in pursuit of any animal, even though I haven't had a lot of luck, I do find out things about myself. And it's amazing how introspective it becomes. I learn so much about the outside world, but also I learn a lot about myself. You do. 
Well, Susie, I can't thank you enough for your time today. And I really, uh, I appreciate just your information and insights and knowledge about this uh, well, about I want to share. I want to share. And, and anyone that's out there that, that can't find anybody, they can always call the NRA because there are a lot of people who are willing to share with them. Susie has built a collection of trophies and memories over a lifetime, and now she influences even more women through her philanthropy. Now let's meet Nicole, who connects and educates through her hunting show on the Outdoor Channel. I'm here in Kellogg, Minnesota with Nicole Reeve of Driven TV with Pat and Nicole, and it is such an honor to be here. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. I'm excited. Well, it's so great because this is the perfect kind of chilly, rainy fall day that is really, you know, a transitional phase in, from summer into fall, which of course means deer season, right? Which is on everybody's brains right oh now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Tell me about it. I mean, my Facebook feed is just straight. It's either football or deer. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Let's talk about your background because you're used to this kind of thing. You know, and that's what I always say. It's so funny because I was, I was born and raised yeah. doing, you know, going out with my brothers and my dad and going deer hunting. And it's what I say, it's in my blood. I don't know anything different. Um, I've always hunted deer. So, you know, it's one of those things where now it's so great because not only being able to affect people's lives through our television program. We go to all these different trade shows and different deer shows and things and get to talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. A lot of females like yourself, they're a little skeptical, you know, when it comes to the deer hunting thing and you you say like Bambi and yeah, yeah. you know and that kind of thing. And you know, it's one of those things where some of it is not just being educated about it, but learning more and seeing, I think, more females into the industry and getting into hunting and the sport of hunting and right. really the ethical part of, you know, how to do it and the different steps and things like that that go beyond harvesting the animal. You know, all the states around pretty much in the United States have some sort of program in place to help um, not only needy families, but, you know, maybe other people who can't afford to go to the grocery store. You know how expensive groceries are getting, Absolutely. especially meat in the markets and things. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, for us and what's healthier? than homegrown venison. You're not gonna get any healthier meat. Just this past weekend, our son Carson went and harvested a deer in Kansas and we just had fresh back straps for dinner last night. If there's anything that anybody takes away from this that is anti-hunter, you know, hunter, there's so much more. Please just find your education. There's so much more beyond harvesting of the animal. Right. You know, that helps people for the rest of their lives. It helps them survive and helps them thrive. You learn so much too about just nature and the Absolutely. way that all of these things work that, I mean, you know, I grew up around hunting, but now I'm kind of a city girl and yeah. I don't know these things. So talk a little bit about that. Well, once, first of all, it's never too late. <laughs> <Thank goodness. laughs> you can still live in the city and yeah. still get out. Yeah. But you know, I mean, that's the number one thing. And that's how we've tried to raise our children is it's not just about the harvesting of the animal, but like you right. said, just going out in nature and enjoying what God has created for us. Tell me about how it differs specifically from the turkey hunt that I've been on. Well, turkeys you have to wake up way too early for. <laughs> we always <You're> giggle. Here. <laughs> we always giggle because we said if we had to hunt turkeys for a living, we don't know if we'd be able to because they just you You'd know starve exactly. Right? Deer are just what Patrick and I have both were raised you know born and raised doing, and um, turkeys for us are kind of all the same. Now the run and gunning of turkey hunting is fun because you know you're calling back and forth to each other. Yeah, and um, you know you're trying to call them. In. Whereas a deer, it's more of a waiting game. You try to put yourself in the appropriate position. You have to do your homework in the springtime, go out and see the, you know, the trail systems, the funnels, the food sources, where the deer are bedding, where the deer are feeding, all these different things. And then you have to put yourself in the right, you know, the right spot at the right time, really. There's nothing like tree stand hunting when you're, you know, 15, 20 foot up in a tree and you have a big buck come in and you're able to have the opportunity to harvest it. It's pretty incredible. It's magical. What I think is fascinating too is that before you did this professionally, you were a third grade teacher. <laughs> I was, out of all things, right? <laughs> right, and so people of all walks of life are getting into this. I mean, that's a, you wouldn't necessarily think that a third grade teacher would become a professional hunter. But I know, everybody always are. asks, how in the world did you go from a classroom yeah. to now, you know? And I said, I absolutely loved what I did as a third grade teacher. You know, there I was able to influence 17, 18 kids in my classroom. Now I'm able to influence thousands and thousands going to 
trade shows and meeting and greeting. When Pat said he first got into the industry 25 years ago, there were never any little girls or, mm -hmm. or women that came to any of the deer shows, trade shows, any of that. And just within the past probably eight, 10 years, because of the influx of women hunters getting into the industry and showing it's okay, you know, no matter what age you are to get into it, it's okay to start hunting. You know, it's never too late. You know, I think my most special story of all is a 77-year-old woman this past year at a trade show came up to me and said, you know, my husband's been hunting for all his life. We've been married for umpteen years, Forever, you know, yeah. and I've never been out to the field with him. She said, after watching you and Pat and watching the relationship you guys have and the experiences you guys are experiencing together, she said, I really felt like I was missing out on that with my husband. Wow. She went out with him and um, she said, I'll never stay at home ever again. Okay, Nicole, thank you so much for that incredibly valuable information. Absolutely, thank you. We're so glad we could come out and be looking for a lot more from Nicole and Pat on Driven TV on the Outdoor Channel. And of course, be sure and check out DrivenHunter.com. It was an honor to speak with such inspiring women who give so much of their time to educate new female shooters and hunters. And now we look to Cabela's to educate us on some more gear we'll need for our time in the field. Of course, you'll need to cover your face and this camo effects face paint. It's not quite as glamorous as CoverGirl, but it definitely gets the job done. And lastly, you'll need something to hold all of this gear. This 5'11 camo backpack is perfect for that. It's got a lot of little compartments, as you can see, to hold everything that you'll need. Now that you've got your list and you're ready to try all of this out in the field, send us your stories and your photos, and they may even end up on the trophy gallery on nrawomen.tv. As always, check in with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we'll see you next time on Love It First Shot, sponsored by Smith & Wesson.